Hello, I'm John Brace and it's 13th of January 2019. I'm an editor, I'm here with Leonora Brace and we're going to talk about a trial we reported on last week on the Monday and Tuesday at the Liverpool Crown Court. Uh, Leonora would just like to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Leonora. Nice to speak to you. Well, that was a strange introduction. But uh, we were both at the Liverpool Crown Court on Monday and Tuesday of last week, and the trial started on the Monday, didn't it? Yes. 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 Uh, and uh, one of the things uh, we found when we got there was that uh, there's two ways to go in, isn't there? There's a revolving door which people have to go in one at a time. And beside it, there's a side entrance. And, of course, a lot of these uh, legal professionals, they drag suitcases behind them. But the thing about the side entrance I noticed, and I think we both noticed both times we were there, is it's like a double door, isn't it, right? But only the right-hand side was open, which made it quite narrow. Did you have difficulties going through there? Yes, I am disabled. Yeah, and you, you have a walking stick, so you need a slightly wider way to go through than most people. And, of course, when you go through there, then you get to the bit where you have, where you searched. And, of course, uh, there were some issues there as well, which I'm probably not going to go into now because I want to get on to the actual topic of the conversation. OK, well, the, the first day was a lot shorter than the second day, but I think it's best to start at the beginning, isn't it? And, of course, I've already published a piece about the first day. And uh, it was a full public gallery, and of course we're not u used to seeing many people at the things we report on. And an awful lot of journalists there as well, weren't there? About a dozen journalists, would you say? Yes. And uh, you, you commented to me that you were the only woman in the press gallery as well. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. Anyway, uh, the jury uh, wasn't present the first day, and uh, they were talking about the jury questionnaires because it's important that none of the jurors have a connection with either the person who's the defendant. Actually, we have, have we mentioned the defendant yet or not? No, not yet. No, I'd better mention who, who the defendant is. The defendant's uh, Mr. Pascal G. Blasio, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and he's uh, pled not guilty to two counts. I'll, I'll, I'll basically summarise the counts. The first one is of uh, causing an explosion in New Ferry, and the second one is, after the explosion, submitting an insurance claim, which the Crown Prosecution Service's case is, if he caused the explosion and then made an insurance claim, that the insurance claim was fraudulent. But the Crown Prosecution Service has kind of explained that he's either guilty of both of them or innocent, uh, in a nutshell. Correct. Yes. And, of course, he's also got someone uh, defending him as well. And uh, they're all uh, dressed up in uh, kind of QC attire. Perhaps you could... Uh, I perhaps I'd better explain. They wear wigs and the, these outfits. And, of course, there's a judge presiding over the case. And his name is... Uh, he, he's also a QC. H.H.J. Uh, Mennery. Do you know what the H.H.J. stands for? No, I'm okay. afraid not. OK. Uh, but anyway, uh, the... Liverpool Crown Court in Liverpool's quite an imposing looking building, isn't it? I know it was previously built on the site of a Liverpool castle, I think, which I found out last week. Don't know anything about that, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, well, I just thought as you have an interest in local history, you might know. But the nearest uh, train station to there is James Street. It's only a very short walk up the road, isn't it? But back to the uh, actual trial itself. Uh, on the... Was it the first day? Yeah. I think it was the first day, yes. Um... The judge in the case uh, decided on a reporting restrictions order. And we can't actually tell you at the moment what's in the reporting restrictions order, uh, but we've got it in front of us. So we're very uh, aware of the fact that there are things we can't mention about the first day. Uh, but the, the jury uh, would, came in on the second day, and there was a big pool of around, uh, oh, must have been about, Three dozen people, would you say? Thirty people or so? Correct. Yeah. And in fact, there were so many people who ran out of seats, didn't they? And people Correct. had to stand. And of course, that was also a problem for the, um, the in the public gallery, because that was quite full as well, wasn't it? Correct. Uh, and uh, in the first day, uh, they were asking if people could sit who weren't uh, press in the press gallery. Was that Correct. right? Yes. Correct. But the, once the jury were there, they said that they had to be strict uh, and there to be no... 
apart from police officers, obviously, because there's a few police officers at the back, but they're just the press and police officers in the press gallery, because, of course, the Germans can see the press gallery, but they can't see the public gallery, because it's like this kind of mirrored system now, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah, it's, um, it's like, um, it's difficult to describe, really, isn't it? It's like a screen, almost, that, that kind of means... Whatever people do in the public gallery, you they can't, can't see out. They can't, can't see out, and the jurors on the other side of the room can't see them. And I presume that's to stop people, say, staring at a juror or intimidating them or doing something they shouldn't. Correct. Because, of course, a lot of these criminal cases, the, the family of the accused turn up, and you don't want them kind of <laughs> staring out a juror and putting them off to you. So anyway, uh, this is obviously a jury trial. And on the second day, one of the things I can report on is um, what happened after about uh, quarter past three. And, of course, uh, all these potential jurors come in. And the judge had to explain to them that it would be longer than the normal jury service of about a fortnight didn't he? It had to be, That's probably go on for about uh, four weeks. And he apologised for the fact that he ran out of chairs and some of them had to uh, stand. Now, uh, he explained to them that um, it wasn't going to be a really long trial, just four weeks, a month or so, but that if there was any reason why a juror couldn't serve that long, they had to fill out a questionnaire, and then he'd have a look at all the questionnaires, but it would all be kept confidential. And, of course, one of the things about... Uh, reporting on jury trials is that uh, there are legal restrictions on actually what you can say about jurors because uh, certain things need to be kept secret, like for instance their names. I know their names weren't announced but you couldn't for instance report on a juror's name and things like that. Uh, but the jurors are selected from people in the local community uh, based on the fact that they're registered to vote. So of course that means there's a minimum age of 18 I think there's a maximum age I don't know, I don't know exactly what it is I think there used to be a maximum age but you're shaking your head now okay but we'll, we'll look into that but anyway the second day he he basically asked all the jurors to fill out a questionnaire saying that it was important they didn't have a connection with the defendant and he also explained that just because the defendant was in the dock that that was just because of where the defendant sits in a criminal trial and they weren't to read anything into that. Because, of course, if you see a defendant in the dock, of course, it brings into people's minds all these TV programmes and so on, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Correct. Because an actual case, they have to decide just on what the jurors have heard uh, rather than anything else. And he explains to them that just because uh, they may have driven through New Ferry, that wasn't a reason to rule them out. And that they may have heard already some newspaper or media reporting of the whole uh, what happened. And he gave him a, a summary of what had actually happened, in that he said that uh, there'd been an explosion in New Ferry, and uh, he gave him a brief kind of summary of what the case was about. But of course it's important that the jurors know that, so that they've got any connection to either the defendant or... They say no. Yeah, they say no, and then they begin to turn into another case. Because it's important also that judges don't have any conflicts of interest, isn't it? Because, of course, if a Correct. judge had a conflict of interest, they'd have to recuse themselves and have somebody else preside over it. But it's, it's not the judge that actually decides on whether they're guilty or innocent in this. It'll be the jury, won't it? Correct. Yes. Whereas in a lot of the civil reporting I do, there's no juries and it's just the judge or judiciary to decide on the outcome of cases. So anyway, the, uh, the trial's expected to be another three weeks, isn't it, I think? Correct. Yeah, uh, well, also, also at the Liverpool Crown Court. And one thing I did notice about this one is that it was the same courtroom on the Monday and the Tuesday, which was on the fifth floor. Yes. And, of course, a lot of the civil reporting I do, it bounces round from room to room, but they seem to have block-booked this one courtroom for the trial. So, of course, if you turn up on the first day, you know it's going to be there on the second day and so on and so on. But they didn't actually sit last Friday because there was something on. I think the judge mentioned a regional sentencing seminar. I don't know. Well, that, that doesn't, that's what I have in my notes. But anyway, uh, on the day we weren't there, the, uh, the prosecution opened their case and there was video published. And in fact, it's been... Uh, 
published on the uh, the news and newspaper websites uh, from the time the explosion actually happened. But I think because the trial is ongoing, I just want to state that the person is innocent until proven guilty, that they have pled not guilty, and that uh, because the trial is ongoing, that we need to let uh, justice run its course. And of course, in, in a, a month or so's time, or a few weeks' time, this uh, reporting... So of course, a report, restricted reporting order uh, will lapse, and uh, we'll be freer to say about the things that have happened so far in this that we can't state at the moment. But thank you very much for your time, Lino, and I think I'll wrap it up there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>